What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Elaine Guy, CEO of Secure Private Data. How are you doing today, Elaine? It's nice to have you back. Hi, Aaron. Uh, nice to have you, and hi to our viewers. Yes. So, you know, let's start off with uh, some info about the company. So, how are you guys doing in this environment? Do you have enough cash to run at least till the end of 2023? And will you need to raise any more cash? That's that's a good question because actually a lot of companies are in need of cash right now. I'm happy to say that we do have plenty until the end of 2023 and probably beyond that as well. So we're not raising any cash. We have close to 5 million in the bank. Uh, the Q3s are gonna show our cash position soon. And we also have done some reductions uh, starting uh, Q3, Q4 in some of the marketing and we also plan to reduce uh, over $3 million of expense next year that will reduce our losses dramatically, uh, preserve cash, and we still expect to double our sales next year. So we're in a very good position. We have no convertible or preferred shares, no debt, and uh, plenty uh, at the very least uh, until I would say close to 2024 or profitability. That's good to know because a lot of companies right now are struggling with that and raising capital. And it's not what you want to be doing right now, especially with where valuations are for many companies. So, you know, I noticed you launched Secure Messenger for Enterprise. Can you tell us more about this? And is this a precursor to the type of clients you will be targeting? Yeah, so Secure Messenger, uh, which is an amazing system where you can send secure messaging to anybody in the world. In fact, even people who don't have secure messenger through our chat by invite. Now, what we're doing is that with the enterprise product, we first started to archive messages. So if you're a financial institution, a government, a defense, you know, a law firm, you typically need to archive your communication for X amount of years, especially in the financial world. So now we have done that and we're improving the product to put more users management tools and dashboards and make it a complete enterprise solution. We've had some requests in Latin America and the defense department and we are putting all those steps in. And yes, next year, uh, especially in emerging markets and Latin America, Central America, we definitely, because the clients over there they're mostly enterprise or government, you know, individuals. It's not like in the U.S. where you can sell a $10, $15 item to an individual as much as the U.S. So we already have distribution lined up. We expect enterprise government clients in Latin America. And because next year is going to be our B2B and small, medium business uh, platform uh, year, we're really pushing to businesses and then why not enterprises as well? And we'll have the right tool for that. We've had a need for it. We know there's a market, so we'll be ready for that next year. Yeah, those are some important markets to target. So how are sales going in this recessionary environment? Uh, sales are good. We, I think we announced that our Q3 was up, I believe 160% from Q3 of 2021. We will come up with our numbers soon. Q4 is looking good too. So remember, we have reduced our marketing a lot and we're in a shift mode right now. And as we speak, we're looking at the budget for next year and what we will do with the marketing. So we have consumer lined up and then B2B and SMB, small, medium business. So Q4 will look good. We're gonna meet, it looks like we're gonna meet our targets for this year, uh, which are gonna be um, three times what we did last year in sales. Uh, and it's also announced in the FRC report, if you go to secure private data and you download the research report, we're gonna meet those targets and we're pushing for next year to do more than double. So, so far Q3 was really good. Q4 looks good too. We don't see a recession because people they're still going to email. In fact, the cybersecurity business is going to be one of the few industries that keeps booming, even in a recession, because businesses are spending more and more and more into cybersecurity. 
And then in terms of the consumer base, especially in the US, privacy has become a huge thing. So we're the only platform out there that offers all these solutions that give you privacy out of Switzerland, proprietary tech and infrastructure, and a security that's, that's quite high. So we don't see any recession. We may have, you know, in some cases, but really we don't see it. it's extremely negligible. So far, every quarter has been higher than the previous one. Yeah, it very much is an essential product. So are you able to meet the targets mentioned in the FRC research report issued on, on your company? And, uh, you know, how's 2023 coming along? So for 2022, we are able to meet the target. 2023, definitely we can meet. We are projecting to exceed that target, actually. And one thing on the FRC report that they mention. They mentioned that we will end up with less than $400,000 in cash. Uh, we love FRC and we have expressed our opinion that it won't be the case. We expect uh, $2 million or more in cash at the end of 2023. But that's because uh, we are radically reducing close to $3 million Canadian in our general budget in 2023. So when you're in a situation like this where the market is really difficult you are better off controlling your burn rate because we're in a business that eventually because we require organic growth and paid growth and also we have our partners now that are kicking in next year so we'll have b2c we have resellers coming online we can just grow nice and easy and preserve our cash Whereas uh, in a great environment, you can afford to maybe spend $3 million on marketing and raise another $3 million at a higher valuation. Today, it's not the case. Our prime directive is the preservation of the company and making sure that our shareholders are uh, going to be rewarded down the line. This is, has been always a, a five-year term. So short answer to you, we are meeting the, the targets that are on FRC and we're going to exceed multiple times the cash position that they expect us to have. And again, uh, just to give them some credit, they have not seen our latest plan. So once they see it and Q1 comes, let's say, and they see that we have reduced, then they will probably readjust and uh, believe us, as we say, because they're independent. We can tell them what we want. But they look at past historical mm -hmm. and they still gave us a 96 cents target and they still gave us a profitability in 2025, which we agree on the profitability. Absolutely. We can't make a comment on the target, obviously. So, yeah, everything is on track. Obviously, our share has been suffering a lot. There has been uh, a couple of um, a few big selling uh, position from Interactive uh, Brokers Canada. Uh, these are individuals that probably are in need of cash, just like a lot of people, unfortunately, now. I myself have bought about half a million shares in the market. Anybody can check my SETI filing, and I will continue to acquire when it feels attractive to me. Um, so, you know, we are very, very confident in management of where this company is going. Yeah. And on the topic of, you know, the market, the shares, I was just going to ask you, you know, I've noticed you have been buying shares like you just mentioned. Is this your way of saying Secure is undervalued and punished by the market as a whole? This is my own personal opinion. I mean, we haven't been at 11 cents in like two, three years. So, yes, when you trade at two times, two and a half times cash in a business that grows over 100 percent a year, that has a profitability roadmap, to me, it's undervalued uh, because we're being punished by a few things. First of all, the market, which punishes everyone. Mm -hmm. And then you have individuals that have different ideas what to do with their cash. And some of them have no choice or some of them sell one position to average down another position. Also, people go after liquidity. Our shares have been extremely liquid uh, which I'm happy to say, and unfortunately so, but it's better to have liquidity and really flush out and let the sellers move on uh, because eventually it will stop, right? So you have the market, 
you have the sellers, you have the urine selling, but it has literally nothing to do with the fundamentals of the company. And the fact that we don't need to raise a penny until profitability, most likely, it speaks volume. But I don't think people know that. They just assume we burned X amount of millions in 2022 and they're looking what are they going to do in 23. And, you know, I understand that. This is why these uh, communications interviews are great because then some people might realize, okay, there's something. And by me buying, I mean, I have 1.9 million warrants at 15 cents Canadian expiring in January 23. I'd rather buy in the market, it's cheaper. Plus, I can basically keep those shares in strong hands. Um, and we have enough cash in the bank that it's not going to miss my $200,000. Of course, it'd be great to exercise warrants, but that won't be until January. So we'll see. Uh, we had 7 million warrants uh, for expiry. We have some people who have exercised them. I haven't exercised mine yet, and we'll see where we are in January. But definitely, it is my personal opinion, not an investment advice, that we are extremely um, attractively valued, I'm just going to say. I mean, it's great to see, you know, you having confidence in the company. That's definitely something I look for when it comes to management and all that. So any other things you wish to communicate to your viewers or your shareholders, new markets, new products, anything like that? Well, we're definitely going to be on track for our VPN. Uh, that's coming in end of Q1 of next year. And VPN, in our case, have astronomical profit margin. And we've had a demand for it. So we're very happy. I think for next year, what I would like to communicate is that we have reduced our marketing expense, but we haven't reduced it in a way that it will negatively impact our sales. We basically figured out what works, what doesn't. In fact, we're putting together a package now with a company called Salem Network. It's huge in the US. Um, and we have some sponsorship. We have the secure show that we already have on Newsmax in the US and Fox Business every week. Now we're going to be on Salem as well on a daily basis. We're reaching more and more people that do not want to buy the big tech products. They are anti big tech. They don't want to have their data mined. So they're coming to us. And we also are planning to integrate our Ingram micro platform which is the largest uh, B2B platform in the world starting April of next year. So 2023 is going to be the year of the, of the SMB and B2B relationships. Uh, we have two deals that we're looking at that we're signing. And one of them looks uh, really good. Uh, on our projection, we project they only will do 20% of their target. The other deal we still have to see, but if they start and it pans out, I think things are going to change. I honestly believe that towards the end of Q1 or maybe early Q1, we will start to see some changes in terms of the partnerships, the sales, uh, the revenues obviously translates to that eventually. And that's why, I mean, I'm buying in this market because to me, it's extremely undervalued. And I'd rather buy a company that I know, obviously, that I know where it's gonna be in a year, two years, three years, uh, than something that may be cheap, but I have no control over, where the company needs to raise money and so forth. We don't need to raise cash. We have recurring sales and we're just gonna stick to our strategy for next year. So. I also want to give a, a promo code, if I may, to our to your viewers here. So if you're interested in Secure, go to secure.com, S-E-K-U-R.com, and put promo code SECURE15 to get 15% off. Um, follow us at Secure Private on Twitter. We're very active. We post a lot of news, a lot of fun articles. Uh, and go to securepriveteData.com to know more about the company and the financials and so forth. And you can download that FRC report. Great, well, thank you so much for those updates, Elaine. Best of luck and we'll have you back on very shortly, I'm sure. Thank you, thanks, Aaron. And thanks everyone, good luck out there. And don't don't panic, the world won't end. It'll come back next, next quarter, hopefully. If you like these videos, kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Drop us a comment down below. 
We'd love to hear from you. And finally, always remember Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your third due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you want to know the full disclosure details, check the description down below along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.